For this week, we reported on comments by the U.S. ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns, saying Washington was ready to repair ties with China and resume high-level talks. Relations between both countries have been at a low following issues like that spy balloon, of course, Taiwan, and the war in Ukraine. NBC News foreign correspondent Janice Mackey Freyer spoke exclusively with Burns. She joins us now from Beijing. Hi, Janice. Good to see you. So the U.S. ready for high-level talks. Is China willing to participate is a big question here. Tell us a little bit about what you heard. Well, U.S. Ambassador Nicholas Burns told me that the U.S. is ready to talk with China, but so far China does not seem to be interested in offering any sort of high-level access to U.S. officials. That includes a phone call between President Biden and China's President Xi Jinping, which has been talked about since February in the aftermath of that uh, Chinese balloon being shot down. As well, there is no timeline uh, to reschedule the canceled visit of Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Uh, the ambassador made these comments to me in an interview uh, that we held earlier this week, and they're among the clearest signs yet uh, that the administration is uh, struggling to restore some sort of dialogue uh, with Chinese officials. I asked the ambassador how problematic it is uh, that China doesn't appear to want to talk to the U.S. at a time when it's diplomatic business as usual with Europe and other countries. Here's what he had to say. It's an issue. Our instinct as a government is when that times are tough, when you're encountering big problems and big challenges in a bilateral relationship, that's when we should talk to each other. So it's not our choice. After the balloon crisis of February, the government here shut down some of the channels of communication. We don't think that's smart. And we're arguing with them. Let's open up the channels. And there doesn't seem to be any hope for some of the issues that the two sides had hoped to find some common ground on, things like climate change and fentanyl. Uh, there's not even marginal progress to report there. Savannah? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, Janice, as you're mentioning, there's this whole host of issues where there is just so much daylight between these two sides. What did the ambassador say about that, about the U.S. bridging those differences and repairing ties when it comes to some of these specific issues that we don't seem to see eye to eye on? Well, when we talk about the U.S.-China relationship, uh, especially uh, when U.S. officials talk about the U.S.-China relationship, they describe it as complicated, as complex, uh, as one of competition but not of conflict. This, this is the wish list uh, of adjectives for the relationship. I, I think right now the two sides find themselves at a very unique point in history. Um, there is not there is a situation where uh, sometimes even at the ambassadorial level, there's just messages being passed back and forth. And there are, are no visiting members of Congress. There are very few American CEOs who are coming here. Uh, so all in all, it has this knock on effect of a real political chill. Here's what he had to say. We have concerns that our secretary of state has expressed Secretary Blinken about whether or not China is going to provide lethal military assistance to Russia for its illegal war in Ukraine. Have you we, seen evidence of that? We've not seen evidence of that, but we're watching very carefully. We have a difference of opinion there. We see China essentially supporting Russia in this war. Uh, we have differences of opinion on Taiwan, but we need to have a stable relationship. You can achieve that sometimes, and we hope to in this case, by having high-level cabinet uh, conversations by having full access for all of our diplomats here in China, and that's what we're arguing for. What we've also seen, Savannah, is in recent days, both publicly and in private, U.S. officials beginning to temper their language uh, around China, especially on the issue of Ukraine, and not completely dismissing the idea that China could play a mediating role. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.